Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for November 1st. November 1st is the 305th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 306th in leap years, with 60 days remaining to the end of the year. Yesterday was All Hallows' Eve, better known as Halloween, and it is the Eve to All Saints' Day, which is today. All Saints' Day may be for some a holy day of obligation, perhaps a national holiday for others. All Hallows Day is a day of celebration and honor of all the saints of the church, whether known or unknown. In Mexico, November 1st is also the first day of the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos. This day commemorates children who have died, Dia de los Inocentes. And the second day, tomorrow, celebrates all deceased adults. Today's word is carriantism. Carriantism is a noun that means <laughs> an insult disguised as a jest or a compliment. Kind of reminds me of a one-liner that said, diplomacy is the ability to tell someone to go to hell and they can't wait to get there. <laughs> that would make a good meme, by the way, but the one-liner is a great example of carriantism. This word comes to us from Latin, Greek before that. Earliest documented use of the word carriantism is 1589. Carrientism. The ceiling of the Sistine Chapel was painted by Michelangelo and it was exhibited to the public for the first time on November 1st, 1512. It's a fresco, which is a technique of mural painting wherein a water-based paint is applied to wet plaster. As the plaster dries and cures, the painting actually becomes part of the wall. This entire work took about four years to complete. In 1520, the Strait of Magellan, the passage immediately south of the mainland of South America, connecting the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, was first discovered and navigated by the European explorer Ferdinand Magellan during the first recorded circumnavigation voyage. And we specify the first recorded such voyage because there may be reason to think that others have traversed the earth, but we don't have record of it. In 1683, the British Crown Colony of New York, New York, was subdivided into 12 counties. In 1765, the British Parliament enacted the Stamp Act on the 13 colonies in order to help pay for British military operations in North America. The Stamp Act of 1765 was an act of the Parliament of Great Britain which imposed a direct tax on British colonies in America and required that many printed materials in the colonies be produced on stamped paper produced in London carrying an embossed revenue stamp. Printed materials might include legal documents, magazines, playing cards, newspapers, and many other types of paper used throughout the colony, and it had to be paid for in British currency, not in colonial paper money. The stated purpose of this tax was to pay for British military troops stationed in the American colonies after the French and Indian War. Although the colonists had never feared a French invasion to begin with, and they insisted they had already paid their share of war expenses, I suspect that it may just have been a way to generate revenue for Great Britain. The colonists felt that any British troops stationed in America ought to be paid for by London, and London thought that they ought to be paid for by the colonists. Needless to say, the Stamp Act was very unpopular <laughs> among the colonists. A majority considered it a violation of their rights as Englishmen to be taxed without their consent, and their slogan came to be, No Taxation Without Representation. How very American. <laughs> Well, as one might guess, one thing leads to another, but that's the Stamp Act. That's the thing that pushed things right to the edge. Moving on, November 1st, 1800, President John Adams, in the last year of his only term as president, moved into the newly constructed President's House, which was the original name for what is known today as the White House. In 1870, in the United States, the Weather Bureau later renamed the National Weather Service, made its first meteorological forecast. Yay, weather service. 
1946, the number one song on November 1st of 1946 was called Rumors Are Flying by Frankie Carl and his orchestra. And there's a link to this in the show notes if anyone would like to listen to it. It's kind of a sweet romantic song. The number one song in America on November 1st of 1946. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include the link to my blog page that is called No Really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, BitChute, and Gitter. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.